I don't want to miss the start, but has, has Wigan found Sean Edwards' mobile number yet? Has oh, well, well, okay. well, it's funny you should say that, John. We haven't actually mentioned it yet. Um, Sorry. We have been digging up about this the last month or so, you know, saying he ain't going, he ain't going, he ain't going. Just go ahead. Did you ever sign a contract or have it released that you'd sign a contract when you hadn't actually signed it? Or even what the hell or is even happening? Offered it? Yeah. What the hell is happening at Wigan? Now, we'll talk about what happened on the field in a, in a bit. Mm. What is happening off the field at Wigan? They announced he'd signed a three-year contract. Yeah. They announced that. Nine and, months ago. And he has not signed any contract and, at all. And all the publicity. Yeah. Yeah. All, 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 all the publicity. We it was pure in, coincidence in yeah. that season tickets went on sale that week. Oh. Oh. Pure coincidence. Oh. But no, but you know, and sat there, you know, sat there, with, had some, you know, <laughs> sat there with all the big wickets, uh, Mr Lanigan, also to uh, Chris Ladslinski, who's the CEO, the new coach coming in, AJ Lamb, the new coach coming in after AJ Lamb in Sean Edwards, allegedly, allegedly, on a three-year deal. Where were the guy who was in charge at Wigan at the time? Sean when? Why wasn't he there saying, tell you what, um, I'm handing over this club to two great coaches to take this club forward and hopefully keep the success what I brought here. I'll tell you what, what an absolute shambles. Wigan are not just on the field at this moment in time, but off the field, how impressive, professional are they? You know, breaking the salary cap. I couldn't care less what sort of figure you're talking about. They broke the salary cap again. Lucky to have the two points as far as I'm concerned that they've got in the, uh, in the league at this moment in time. But, hey, listen, you can't blame Sean Edwards. Because let's, let, let's, let's not forget this, right, Sean? He would have been in contact, I would say, daily, if not weekly, or every two or three days, with any given what's going on. Since Lamb has been there with the performances, knowing Sean as I do, as I said last week, he would have been on, on to them. But uh, I reckon now, he's had enough. I reckon he's been totally disrespected. So what Sean Edwards has done from a professional point of view, is looking after his own interests. And also, let's not forget here, Sean Edwards, you know, has never, ever coached a rugby league side. Never coached a rugby league side. Even at his own amateur club, Hunts, uh, at uh, Wigan St. Pat's, he's never been involved. So I'm asking the question here now. Eddie Jones, he's making a tour of the England job. They're not going to win the World Cup. He's looked at that performance from there. Eddie Jones today, like all coaches are doing in all sports, has come out with a pathetic statement by saying England are still suffering from the 2015 World Cup. Hold on, that was four years ago. No, that's just Blaine Burgess. Yeah. And and uh, and he's going to be bringing in uh, an expert on psychology or whatever. What an absolute load of tosh that is. But also, what Sean has done here now, because it's quite clear, Sean Edwards in rugby union has got a massive and brilliant reputation, not just as a defence coach, but as a quality coach as well. So, from the guys in rugby union... The big, the big wigs in rugby, and certainly from a player's point of view, in Delalio and Greenwood and Carlin and so on, they know exactly what Sean Edwards can bring. I'll tell you what, Sean Edwards won't be going to Wigan. You've blown it, Wigan. Sean Edwards will be in, in rugby union still, whether it's going to be at Wasp, which has been uh, mentioned, but also as well, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's part of the England setup come the end of the World Cup. Or taking over Wales. In, in September. In, no, 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 Wales. 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 Wales have got a new... Another key one. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they've got... Like, Pivik, I think. Yeah, they've got uh, a course... But he could they still be no, the, no, they don't want him... No, they they're definitely... They're, no, 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 yeah. Sean said himself, he's got a new direction. Wigan have made an absolute tours of this. Well done, Sean. He'll be saying in rugby union. Well, what have we said for the last month? And I said it to you, might as well have had a plane with a banner on the back of it, driving around saying, hey, it's Sean Edwards, am I a contract? Right, 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 then, right then. Another question is here for everybody, I guess. It's for everybody out there as well, to be honest with you. Even the Wigan fans, because they must, they must be shaking their head. What, what is going on here? Well, Do you know can, what? I, can I just right. jump in one yeah, second? Because it's quite important. Yeah, thing, because Wigan will be delighted because tonight they have got one new fan because uh, Bill Coe. Uh, and his uh, lovely wife, uh, they have had uh, a little boy. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, many, many. Right, so Bill Cross. Yeah, he's, many, many, uh, many, many, many comments there. Do you, know what, right, do you know what as well, right? Here now, you know Sean Wayne? Sean must be thinking, what did I do anyway to get the sack in the first place? What the hell did Sean Wayne do? Because as we all know, Wayne, red and white through and through. Split him down Cherry the middle. Cherry and white. I was said, 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 said on a radio... Hold on. I was said on a radio commentary... Well, you two, you up. I was said on a radio commentary to Dennis Betts, red and white. He went, it's cherry and white. And he were gonna, I thought they were going to warm me up, honestly. Uh, well, it's like reason you can say blue and yellow, it's blue and amber. Yeah, so I thought, all right. So blue the chin, Sean Wayne, what did Sean Wayne ever do wrong at Wigan? Came through all the system, all the success, right. what he got. They played boring rugby, didn't they? That was the problem. That was only that scene. But that, that, but that changed. Then won the, won the grand final from there. 
what has Sean Wayne, what, what has Sean Wayne done to make sure you know he's not only not in rugby league anymore, but also to not part of the, the great winning club? There's there's two huge issues here. The first is, I think we said it when Sean was first appointed, he would have asked for some assurances. He would have looked at where Wigan are now on the field and the fact that he's coming back and it's his reputation at stake. So to take the job in the first place, he would have said, I want this for me, backroom staff. I want A, B, Sean C. Said, he, Sean said, the most important thing for me when I come back to Wigan Rugby League is I need two yeah. quality so assistants. He would have said, that was his first... I want strength and conditioning guy, I don't want a physio. Which Sean Wayne denied it, he ever had one assistant. Mm. And they've got rid of some of their backroom staff. So he would have mm. said, I want that in Well, most of the backroom staff. And these are the people that I want, and they won't come cheap. And he would have said, and player recruitment wise, I get that we've gone through three or four years where some of the star names are gone, but if I'm coming back, what star names are we signing? And I think the, that's the first thing. Clearly, Wigan haven't been able to give him that, which is why there is this delay in the marriage coming together. So that's a worry on the field, that they don't have the money to get the star names that Sean Edwards presumably thinks they need and the staff, more importantly, the infrastructure. But the other thing is, you mentioned crowds going down, and we tried to work out why, when a team is successful, crowds go down. Because you ask any fans, and yeah, teams play a boring style of play, but if you win, that's normally enough to at least keep the same level of fan base. The crowds have dropped by about 4,000 over the last three or four years, and that's why they've still been successful, current champions. So what is it that is turning the Wigan public off? supporting a team that they are clearly passionate about. And I think it's a lack of leadership. I think they are absolutely fed up we, we mentioned, with scenarios such as this. Phil, we mentioned the last, truth is we've mentioned the last couple of weeks, is it time for Ian Lennigan to hand over control to someone else? The problem he's it got... It's our understanding that club is up for sale. But how but is who's going to want to buy it now? At the, moment, buy it? Oh, at the moment, it's a great time to buy it because you can virtually walk yeah, what in... Are buying? What are you buying? Well, well, now is a good time to buy it because the market is lowest. Well, what are you buying? But if you want to sell it for a certain price, you're not going to get I think when you talk about the crowds going down, you've got to remember that the crowds across the whole competition have been going down for several years, so that's reflective of a trend. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the but key proportionately, issue, the key issue down, yeah. is, is the truth. And the same thing happened with John Bateman leaving. Yeah. Well, he's going to sign with Canberra, but he's signed with us to come back. Yeah. A couple of weeks later, John Bateman tells Phil Wilkinson, I haven't signed to come back. <laughs> so a flat out lie, which oh, yeah. is also it's, it's with the Sean Edwards. So yeah. why? But, yeah, I, mean, but the, I think, the, I the, think the, the media mismanagement is yeah, right. We've we, we, we talked about this lately: disinformation, misinformation. We've seen we this talk about. At the, I mean, one of the main problems at Witness was the fact that a lot of the fans felt that they weren't being told the they truth. They were lied. They were lied to. Well, the club's not in debt. And <laughs> unfortunately. Part of the issue is, yes, you're not performing on the field, but you are losing fans, you're hemorrhaging fans because they don't trust the people that are running yeah, the but which are, Yeah, but which are, all, all clubs are like that, aren't they? No, it's no. A da at, at the well, moment, no. it's a downward spiral. No. Well, I'll use an example of who I interviewed last week, Michael Carter. I mean, I don't think he's ever tried to sell Wakefield fans mm -hmm. down the river and say, we're going to you know, we're gonna go and sign Gareth Widdop or Sam Burgess. He's always been very honest, very I transparent. I said most clubs. Even my, club, no, even, I, even, I, even, even my club are telling a few... Uh, I think... Oh, Paul, I, Paul, Paul scraps his out there, you know, when he transition. I think the... I'm not sure that's a lie. I think the issue for Wigan... Well, I'll say, well, it's certainly a Paul scratching, I'll they, tell you, Phil. They've lost well, the trust. Well, leads after seven. <laughs> they've lost the trust of their fans. <laughs> well, oh, no, Wigan the have lost the trust I of their fans. I agree with you. And this now... John's just hit the nail on the head there. Mm. They got caught with a pants down over mm. Bateman. And they've been caught with a fact. This is an absolute. Dis this is a disgrace. Mm. There is, and that statement today is a disgrace. Don't say anything. Oh, we're trying to get hold of him. Yeah. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> what the hell? Where is he? Is Should he we like... ring him up every oh, day? Sean. Saying, Sean, 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 we need you to start. Tell me, we need well, you to start. He's not. He's on the moon. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <on the tele. laughs> I can see him. He's in a in the car park. You yeah. can say hello. Probably having a few clients celebrating. I think when they negotiated the non-contracts, they knew his phone number. But well, why? Yeah. Why then? The big question is, right, this is it, and, and there are two sides to every story. Why has Edwards agreed <coughs> to have it announced that he signed a contract when he hasn't signed a contract? What mm. is in what benefit is that to him? I don't I there has got to be there's gonna someone from Wigan is gonna come back to us, whether it's on the record or off record and say, look, this is what's happened. It, we, we know that. There are two sides to every coin. So has Edwards mm. maybe is he pulling a fast one or is he just going, well, I've got a contract. Oh, so I can't sign. Well, no, he started off with when and if, 
Yeah. Well, and if I come, and now yeah. I don't have a contract. So I think as Phil said, there's obviously been a breakdown and that he was going. Yeah. Something's happened and now he's yeah, waiting. Sure, Scotty, when you went to Leeds from all, they didn't go, oh, here's Gary Schofield, just paid 100 and whatever grand for him. Uh, you didn't rock up with no contract, did you? I'm sure that was the first thing you did, wasn't it? Sign your contract before mm-hmm. they announced that you would sign him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, and, he's unless in, that in, contract in everybody, but, uh, is subject to certain conditions. And Sean Edwards has said, for me to come to your club, I want X, Y, and Z. And they've said, of course you can have X, Y, and Z. And eight months down the line, X, Y, and Z hasn't happened. But also, too, another laugh of looking from... Uh, and I don't think it has. From Mr honest. Lennigan. Because Lennigan uh, didn't, say, didn't say in the, uh, in the press conference... I wanted Sean Edwards at Wigan for the last ten or fifteen years. This is how long it's taken. Now we've got now we've got our man. I wanted Sean here ten, fifteen years ago. Now we've got him. Boy oh boy. But, Isn't this just an absolute what, shambles? Let's take it this on there. What, 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 what do Wigan do now? They bought an Adrian Lamp, supposedly for a year, in a whole Well if they position. give it to Adrian Lamp now and say, right, tomorrow Adrian Lamp's signing a new three year contract, it looks like he's the second choice. He's automatically so default what second choice. So what do they do? I tell you what, looking at Adrian Lamb's body, I mean, is Adrian Lamb enjoying it at Wigan? Yeah, but uh, you've got to look at from his point of view. He's got, he's, it's just an impossible. I think he's been put in an impossible situation. What they should have well, begged, they that, should have begged. Announced, yeah. Wigan should have begged Wayne to stay till the end of his yeah, contract. Yeah, and then it comes yeah. again: is why has he left? You and see, this question has yeah, never right. been answered. You why has he left? Right, you know the facts of the matter. We should not be having this conversation. Do you know why? Because Sean Wayne should still be in charge of Wigan. No, Simple well, as. Well, you can't rewind time, Gary. No, 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 but we don't. We, we, we should be having it. Wigan. But why has he gone? Because it could be the same reasons. Because why of he's interference gone. from the chairman. It could no, be the I same reason why he's gone. It's the same reason that Edwards isn't coming. If you want to do your job to the best of your ability, you need certain tools to be able to do that. Oh, for, and for, Sean oh, Wayne was told right. that his backroom staff was being cut. He was oh, also Sean told Wayne was, that Sean Wayne was undermined players, by Lennigan. That's why Sean Wayne knocking on Lennigan's door and saying, you're undermining me. If this is going to be the case, why, I... Why are you saying he's undermined him? You've got to, you've got to, you can't just say that. You've okay, got to yeah, what is approach? What? He's approached Sean Edwards to take over his job. Right. Okay. And Sean's found out. And he's not been belittled, though. He's not been undermined. He's walked out. He's walked out. That's what he's And rightly so. Because the job, what he's done. As much to do with the fact that players that he wanted to be there were sold for under him. Like Mike McAlora. There would be his general on the field, and suddenly McAlora is told with, what, two weeks of the pre-season to go, he's going somewhere else. And I don't think the coach has a say in that. And the coach says, hang on a minute, that's my general on the field. So I think all of those issues become... It, it's untenable then mm. for Sean Wayne to stay as much as it is for Wigan to want to keep him. When you look, you look at their recruitment strategy most recently. I mean, they've signed two players from the two, <laughs> players, two players from the championship, and they've sold their best players in around. They've, they've made money off selling them. They've been but selling that, their best players for the last three years. That's what I mean. That's always a strategy that's been yeah. on for the last few years, and they've picked up bargain sell, we say, or, or yeah. lesser players. You know, Tali Matato, Willie Issa. They're not. They're not signing marquees. No, so no, that's they're really in their marquees. Yeah, and they, they've made some good. Like Joe Bullock, I think he's a great signing, but that's a cheap signing. So they're obviously not either. They don't want to, or they don't have the money to go out there and spend. Well, I was sitting in football, and I said this having watched Bottom Wonders when they go out and sign poor players when they're in Premier League. If you keep signing poor players, you become a poor team. And that you know, and you mentioned Bullock. You put Bullock in a good team. He'll be fly- and he's flying anyway, so how good would he be in a team that was good and on top yeah. every week? Well, how good would he be? How would Bullock be just said talent side or Warrington yeah, side? Yeah, that's what I mean, when you're putting him in and he can mm. just absolutely have an impact. And it's just, they have recruited too many non-Wigan players. Can I be, you know, they're a big club Wigan and these are not big name signs. So have we got Jared Salmon right. and we said, what a great deal it is for him. But you don't get Man City not going out and buying a bloke from the Championship. So Wigan, so Wigan then have not denied the fact that Sean has not signed this contract. He hasn't clearly hasn't signed. You know, it Sean yet, said this, but Wigan said, "Oh well, well, realistically, yeah, well, no, he's not signed it, but he is going to do. He is going to do. You know, they've not. Well, what's that? They put out a statement saying we're trying to get in touch with him. That was it. You're kidding. Is that what they said? Yeah, that's a statement. We're trying to get hold of him. Well, I would imagine. I would imagine Sean now because it's a big celebration down in Wales for what they did at the weekend. Sean likes to put a Guinness, I can reassure you. Sean Edwards will be, uh, you know, worried about with Wigan at this moment in time, what have you, because they've just made an absolute toss of what they've done. And now Sean has done the right thing. The Six Nations has finished, put himself in the shop window. They've done a great job. He's been doing it for, for the last month, Gary, hasn't he? No, yeah. no, but still, but, but now, after, after 
what's yeah. happened in the Six Nations. Mm. He's done it rightly so because, you know, Gatland, <coughs> what, what he's done from there, absolutely brilliant from there, the Six Nations, he's put himself in the shot window. And you know what the great thing about it, uh, fellas, is Sean is being honest with what's happened, isn't it? And so Wigan now are trying to get out of this and they will they will try and put the blame on Sean Edwards. You know, Sean said, well, you know, I've got this three-year deal, but the contract's not the being thing, put in front of me. The thing they is, will try and twirl that. They will try and put spin on why he's if, not signed this if contract. If he had signed a legally binding contract, <coughs> Wigan would have come out and said that. Mm. Yeah, so exactly. that is that Their statement like today of saying we are trying to get hold of him is a tacit admission that he hasn't had a contract. And something has gone badly wrong and they're not yes. speaking to each other. Mm. Yeah. That's, the, that's the worry I would have. So, Wigan uh, fans, uh, go on, what's happening on social media? Well, no, because my computer's broken, but however, uh, get Scurry to ring him on air, see if Edward's answers, asked Dave. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> if Edward's number, I thought him. Ah, it's it's fine, sure right, but, I, but I, I would imagine uh, he might just answer, say, Scurry, I'm on the Guinness, I'll speak to you for a week. Yeah? <laughs> it will be. There's a big uh, celebration in Wales now. Lots of people are enjoying the, the hubris of uh, Wigan. I don't want to say they're in crisis because some they are, they are, are. on and off the field. <laughs> 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 on and off the field. I don't want to be one of these That's faceless. I don't know these faceless online people who just go on and have opinions. I don't want to be one of those. You people. look rattled, Rich. You I'm rattled. rattled. I'm rattled. Is that his head? We'll, we'll talk about that later. That <laughs> For that one, we're rattled. Hilarious moment in the press conference there, but uh, people are genuinely amused. We're replacing them with Blackpool. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I think that was Andy. That might be Andy. Um, lots of people are not, not impressed. Uh, Sean signing uh, is like uh, Matt Orford was going back to Bradford after getting injured in the season, says Mark. Uh, Sebastian's not happy with Andy. Uh, Paul Wigan says Dave. Um, John's not happy. No, one, no one's happy. Wigan fans are not happy. Are we bothered that they're not happy? I mean, why? What? Look, as much as we like to get stuck into Leeds, right? And, and we do. Just the rest so. not, you know, And I don't want to talk about Leeds now. They own their own super stadium. They've gone out and spent money. So they're trying to rectify what has gone wrong in the last couple of years. I say what's gone wrong. They won the league two seats. They won the competition two years ago. Yeah, let, let, let but the they are up. addressing... Let, let the best players up. Yeah, well, look, that's part of the problem. But they try to address it. At Wigan, they're not doing that. They do, now Williams is going. It's like, how many good players can you get rid of before you become a rubbish team? And is that what we're at? You know, is this what we're seeing now? Mm. What are the players thinking? You, all right, here's one thing. You're, you've been a player. What would you think if you're sat in the dressing room and they go, oh, yeah, you're, you know, your best, your best centre outside mm. you or whatever and you fall back. Well, we're going to get rid of him. We're getting rid of him. That's Don't worry, lads. Don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to get a couple of lads in from the Champions You're going, hang on. Why aren't playing it to win trophies? This that is, this that is, is what, what happened at the end of your time at Leeds. Mm. Every week, a star name like. Yeah, well, because the club was skinny. Same old, same old, but, but, but what, what, what but, impact does that have then on the dressing room? Oh, yeah, massive. Absolutely, yeah, massive. Because what you're thinking is, because the, the two clubs, as I say, whole were massive at the time. Leeds, uh, massive as well. At, uh, at the time, you're just thinking, well, who would be in them? Surely we're going to be bringing a, a quality a quality player and, and I like to be honest with you I say when I got salt from Leeds to go to Woodersfield and uh, the salt me for under 35 grand didn't make any slight difference to the debt what were in nearly 5 million quid they brought in uh, Dean Dean Clark Dean Clark they brought in Dean Clark from New Zealand paid 8 grand for him that just tells you doesn't it what mess they were in yeah it just tells you but yeah the, and what the, season did they have in 1996 they did they? The closest that they came to going out. Getting relegated, yeah. And, and, no, and, going and, out of yeah, business. Yeah, another did. Yeah, the last oh, conversation. And I'm not saying that we're going to get gone and sold on the stuff to keep Leeds afloat. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the last conversation I had with Raymond Shuttle with the, the football chairman then, you know, it was quite simple. Leeds were literally £5 million in the rubbish. The bank had stopped the money and we were on hundred. We were on £135 to play Swinton. That was my last game for Leeds. I told my pectoral muscle and then got sort on uh, towards field. So yeah, Leeds, Leeds were totally in the mire, but as I say, we did talk about signing quality players, they just were, they just didn't have the money to do that. And uh, Phil's mentioned with crowds, you look at sponsorship and all this sort of thing, it could quite quite easily happen to Wigan because one thing for sure, on the field, are Wigan making the five? Not a chance. He, Not he, a chance. Here's another thing that would be a worry if I was a Wigan fan. Um, the DW Stadium could become even more expensive because Wigan Athletic have got new owners. There's a chance that Wigan Athletic may even get relegated this year, which is going to put the squeeze on the footballing. What, what will Wigan do? Well, that actually, them getting relegated could, might actually be good for Wigan rugby because it might, mean, it might they might need all the money they can get. But what if Wigan can't afford... The, the money is the issue. 
it's spiralling down, suddenly the DW becomes too expensive as an option, either through the landlord or... Well, is it, it's my understanding what that Wigan do don't get any corporate hospitality, they don't get any income from anything no, at the no, DW. No, no, no. So, we have this, you know, we have this morning at Super League level about clubs not owning their own ground, right? Castleford, I remember five years ago, I was going, oh, they kick them out, they rub, the ground's rubbish there, get rid of them, we don't want them in Super League. At least it's their own. It's their own ground, they pay all the bills, and they've got a team that, that has developed accordingly. And What's that in your room, though? One Jesus. of the big four. I don't know. Oh. All right, well, uh, fair well, enough. Well, we'll spread move on from that. That's gone too. All right, calm down, lads. That's a Wakefield, <laughs> in the process of buying their own ground back, might be a rubbish ground, but it's going to be their ground, and mm. they can determine mm. what yeah, exactly. income they generate mm. out of that exactly. by what money they put into it, right? It's their ground. It's non rugby income that keeps clubs afloat. Yeah, yeah. And you look at, you look at yeah. Wigan, mm. right? Mm. Mm. They don't own anything. Hey, but hey, listen, and I'm but saying, what, what's the doomsday scenario if that no longer becomes an option where they can play? I don't think that will happen. Well, no, David, David and Mick says they'll move to the Lee Sports Village. What about Oral? But also as well, fellas, right? We, 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 no, they're selling. They're selling. But yeah, also yeah, as well, they're right? Moving training grounds. So. Robin, Robin Parr. Yeah. We, could, we could have been down here before. Let's not forget, why are not the DW? Because of the mess they created by signing... All the best players, mm -hmm. all the internationals in the world, massive, massive contracts. And what happened then? They lost the home ground in Central Park. This could quite easily happen now, where they, may have, to, they may have to go borrow a ground from somebody else and maybe leave Sports Village. What is the doomsday? I don't think it's that bad yet, but they, they do need yeah, to sort this You're out. you yes. Crowds are going down. Exactly, exactly. And if they <laughs> keep losing, oh. they're going to keep going down. So, and, and, they're never, and they're not going to attract the best players. 2006, there was that rallying round feel that clubs get when everything started going wrong with Wigan. Last year they cheated, isn't they, to stay up? <laughs> well, they, you so mean if they, if they brought the Sound Layer cap quite yeah. I, think, I yeah. think there is an yeah. asterisk in a record book that says... Cats were not relegated because they signed Stuart Fielding. Uh, I think it was Michael it Dobson. Was Dobson. Michael Dobson. It was both of them, wasn't it? Fielding and Dobson. I think Fielding was all right. It was Dobson who kept them in the division. Right. That was... I, got the, I, got, I, got the sack from, I got the sack from the BBC, you know, because you know that weekend I said, Wigan, I was on with John Ledger and I was on the Super League show, right? And I got sacked from, the Super, I got sacked from the Super League show because what I said was, well, and me and John Ledger had a good debate on TV about you know, <laughs> and John said, oh, we're going to be all right. I said, I'll tell you what, Wigan's getting relegated. He went, what? I said, I said Wigan's getting relegated. He went, that'll never happen. I said, what? Why won't it happen? Just because it's Wigan Rubble League Club, and what did they go and do? Yeah, brought the salary cap, bought these two players, and that was me off there. Morris Lindsay, straight in contact, <laughs> straight in contact with the BBC, get him off that show now, and oh, that was me got the book. I wish the people who ran Super League I said, Wigan would get out. Morris's number. Because I said, because I said, because I said, on the Super League show, that Wigan would get relegated. Boy, oh boy, there's only one person who got relegated. That was me. Well, I wish off the people who run P45. Super League and the RFL now had more influence over the BBC than they did back then. Mm. Right, come on, let's get the... Have you uh, seen the comment we've had on Facebook? I'll let you read that one. Uh, Gary uh, says, What's the odds Wigan will go down and the RFL will move the goalposts and say no one goes down to save the pies, <laughs> Gary the Viking there. But it's too pleased, Gary. It's, it's Robert Helston now. It's not not not, uh, not uh, Ralph. I've got his name now. Uh, Sheila's bought into the conspiracy as well. Rugby League Online, the home of conspiracies. What, these online people. 